What's up guys, welcome back to DCA. Today what we're gonna do is look at modeling risk in the crypto market through the lens of extremes in market participation. So particularly we're talking about the FOMO phase of the market. These situations typically occur when many new individuals enter the market. They bring with them new money, we see the price rapidly expand and that incentivizes holders of the asset, previous holders of the asset to start taking profits. Where the price rapidly heads up, like we saw uh, here when we got to around $1,000, here at around $20,000, and here at around $64,000. The price rapidly expands and the mid and long-term holders start to take profits in mass. How we're going to assess this today is through price volume. Now we've looked at this in the past, but we're going to look at it in a different way today. Here what we have, I'll just minimize this for now. This is the price volume, the 50 day moving average of the price volume, as well as the 400 day moving average. Okay. So in orange, you see we have this oscillating value. This is the 50 day moving average compared to the 400 day moving average of price volume. Now, just to you know just to mention i've talked about this multiple times in the past on the channel but we use price volume because price volume in my opinion is a much better uh, analysis tool for looking at comparing different levels of volume over time that's because as the price goes up the volume will naturally contract you know when you when you have a when you have an asset that's a thousand dollars for instance the volume will be much higher then the asset will be at, let's say, $100,000. Now, in spite of that, in spite of the volume being higher over here at $1,000, the amount of dollars being traded per day is much, much lower. So looking at the price volume tells us how many dollars were traded per day on the asset, okay? It doesn't mean that many dollars went into the asset. It simply means that many dollars were traded. And as we know, more market participants trading more amounts of money in general leads to higher prices. And that's what we see. So you see over time, in general, the price volume increases where, you know, we'll, we'll experience these periods where it rapidly increases in a short period of time. And then it sort of levels off for a bit, rapidly increases, levels off, and now we're in a leveling off phase. Now, what I want you to notice here, when the 50 day moving average gets significantly far extended above the the 400 day moving average if you just notice where these times occur they happen right at these market bubbles okay so market inefficiencies you could think of them as so we saw that here in 2013 here in 2018 and then here in 2020 and 2021 so quite frankly you could pick any two moving averages but I chose the 50 day moving average because the pressure in the market or the selling pressure builds up over time. It doesn't all happen in one single day. So, you know, you have more sellers, more sellers, more sellers. And then at some point, there simply aren't enough buyers to capture all of the selling pressure anymore. So that's where you get a, a rapid transition point. And those places tend to be where the market drops off all right so you know if you see right here in december the market drops off we see the 50-day moving average start to fall the same thing happens here in july and you know we see the same thing happen here in uh, february and you know the market cycle didn't hit its peak in february but it sort of ran out of steam in february we essentially went from a place where we were at around fifty-eight thousand. And then we only went up maybe 10% or so, 10 or 15% from there, in addition to the uh, 58,000 up to our, our high at 64,000. And you see that same thing happen back here in, in 2013 and, uh, you know, in the middle and end of 2013. Okay, so now let's go back over to here. So what we've done simply is applied the DCA index risk model and we've applied the model, the risk metric onto the volume. So you can see how, you know, quite naturally, we, we get this recurring event each time that we're approaching a market cycle peak. 
Now, we never know where the peak is going to occur. But this this simply goes to show you that when you know when we start to get into this this level here, these are the times when the market is approaching a market cycle peak. So you know this is this is how we see these events typically play out. As the market is gaining, it's you know is entering into a place of sheer FOMO, an irrational market, uh, market inefficiency. We see the volume rapidly increase okay so the 50 day moving average for the price volume rapidly increases above the 400 day moving average and you know the as we're doing that you can see that we typically you know it's telegraphed quite frankly the price is going up rapidly we start to enter into this above the 400 day moving average with the 50 day moving average and that generally leads to a large market contraction now notice it doesn't always indicate that you're at the actual top, okay? Because in 2013, in the middle of 2013, we reached this place where, you know, we were at this very high level above the 400 day moving average for the price volume again. And then we we needed a large retraction, okay? And then, you know, we saw the same thing happen in the end of 2014. So we started hitting the highest levels on the risk metric as right as the um, the price volume was entering into this highest level where we typically go. And then we needed another large retraction. And in fact, in both instances, we went down approximately 80 percent or so. All right. Then the market starts to pick up steam. So you see the the 50 day moving average oscillating with respect to the 400 day moving average and you see we're picking up momentum so you know if you notice we're making higher highs higher highs and then we continue to do that and in fact right here at around uh, four thousand dollars we actually did get into this 20 to 25 zone but it played out sort of like it did back in um, 2013 where we hit this market cycle peak and then needed a large retraction. Now, in this instance, it wasn't as large. You know, it was maybe 30 or 40 percent. But nonetheless, there was still a large correction when we got into this level. We went back down and then as soon as we started to hit the highest levels on the DCA index risk model. So we were right about here and then we hit our market cycle peak and then went on yet another 80% retraction over time. So, you know, and then it just sort of played out like that again. Now you saw exactly what we saw back in this market cycle. It played out slightly differently, um, mostly in my opinion, because of the COVID event. We came down, started to make higher highs, and then, you know, who knows what would happen, but um, we had the COVID event, so we obviously went much lower during that time. And then from there, we shot back up, indicating that if not at the top we were likely very near the top and that is exactly how it played out this was not in fact our market cycle peak in fact over here was our market cycle peak so will it play out in a new way you know we've seen in each instance we we come into this level come back down and then come back to the level again you know that's happened twice now so you know, potentially that could happen again. Now, it's not something I'm banking on and it's not something that, you know, I don't think you can count on, but it's something worth watching. And I think what you can count on is in the crypto market, when we experience a bull run, like we, like we have in each of the prior market cycles, I think you will see this volume shoot above the 400 day moving average with the 50 day, yet again going into these much higher levels indicating that we are likely overheated too many new participants have come in there's too much uh you know new money there's too much free money going around long-term holders are going to take profits again and that's what we you know talk about on the channel it's why we look into data like this it's trying to explore new ways of looking at the data and identifying trends and you know we don't want to just find trends we want to find trends that make sense that have a logical conclusion behind them and this is logical when you have 
this many participants coming into the market that are new with lots of new money, you're going to naturally have long-term holders taking hundreds or thousands of percent profit over time. And that's exactly what we're seeing. And I think it's exactly what you'll continue to see going into the market in the future. You know, the last thing we can mention is you also see when we are at the lowest levels of the risk model, we tend to be at these lowest levels with volume, price volume. So when we're at the lowest levels, look at where the volume is. We're not getting down to these low levels on high volume. We're exclusively getting down to these low levels. So here in 2022, here uh, at the COVID event in 2020, here in 2019, and here in 2015 and uh, late 2014. Notice where we're at each time. We're at very low volume levels, but what happens? When we're at the lowest volume levels, you actually do see a spike in, in volume. And that's because the smart money steps in and buys right there. That's what turns the market around. The smart money, notice how the light blue areas actually tend to be the lowest levels, okay? And that's because this is capitulation, capitulation here, and the market just sort of dies out. And then when you get to these lowest levels, you have a lot of sellers, a lot of scared in individuals selling, which drives up price volume. And you have a lot of smart money buyers stepping in and buying the asset. So you have this dual mechanism like we had here in 2015, here in 20, uh, late 2018, early 2019, when the price went from around $7,000 all the way down to around $3,500. And then finally here at the COVID capitulation event. Each time you have a lot of sellers and a lot of buyers coming into the market. So this is something to watch guys. And one thing uh, you can note is we actually reached one of these dark blue levels right here when we had this massive price drop that we just recently witnessed. So, you know, that doesn't necessarily indicate that the price is going to turn around from here, but it's something worth taking note of. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. If you guys like this type of content, hit like and subscribe. You can head over to the Discord channel to sign up for the DCA index risk model. That is the risk model that we're looking at right here. Um, it's a trading view indicator, though. Um, so you can sign up for that and I'll send it out to you in a day or two. That's it for this one, guys. Until next time, as usual, see you.